The next day came quicker than I would have liked. I was woken by the medical team, Dr. Stormy's team, and a few of the synth development team. They explained a few things to me, letting me know what would happen and how long the mix of surgeries was going to take. My eyes went wide when I heard the amount of time I was going to be under. The surgeries would take at least 23 to uh, 27 hours. During that time, I would be put under a mix of magical and chemical sleep. Stormy explained that my body had a high resistance to magical mind manipulation magic due to the time I spent with a quill head in my head. They would take me on and off the chemical ones as they worked, only using it when they needed to to make sure I didn't wake up during the delicate part of the procedures. With everything said and done, my friends were let in for only a few minutes to give me their well wishes. They knew as well as I did by now that the odds of my survival, this experimental bullshit, was about 50-50. Either way, I didn't, I didn't get this done, I'd die no matter what. The machines I were hooked up to were keeping me alive for now, but they couldn't do it forever. So, with all that known, every pony that came to Los Alicorn with me, apart from Mom, was let in. To my shock, even Uncle Ori's bed was pushed into the room. He was awake and smiling weakly at me as his bed was brought up next to mine. He looked a lot better than the last time I'd seen him, when he was almost dead on the ground, after he was shoved into his own body again. My friends waited until he reached a hoof to put it on my own, as he said weakly, I love you, Star, and I'll be here when you wake. Be brave, be strong, and shine bright. His smile gave me hope that when this was all over, everything would be okay. Ora came up next while Oricalus rested his head back on his pillow and closed his eyes. It looked like the energy to just talk to me was too much for him. Come on, dude. Let the dude get a magical protein bar or something that can make him better again. Because I'm pretty sure if they put their minds to it, the Ministry could create such a thing. He was out in a matter of seconds. Ora smiled towards him. I've been helping the docs look after him. He's still weak, but thanks to whatever they're giving him, he's putting on weight and he's getting healthier. He'll be getting a couple of things replaced too after you do. But things are looking up for him. Yeah, he's a tough old buck. Stardust said as he came over and gave me the best hug he could. Good luck. And remember, we'll be here when you wake up. Unless one of us has to use the bathroom. Then we won't be here, but that's one of those situations that... Uh, you know what? Never mind. I'll see you when you wake up. Windthrasher was next. She was looking sick again, but she managed to smile as she hugged me, too. Come back to us, okay? Wingnut and Bite were next. Wingnut saying, Ah, uh, I hope he'll be... He didn't finish. Instead, he sniffed and ran out of the room. Bite sighed at my curious look, saying, He's been having a hard time ever since you were in here. Just... Keep fighting, and we'll see you soon. I nodded as Aura came close. She leaned down and kissed my cheek, then ran a hoof through my mane. Her eyes full of love, as she said. Be on the other side, shrimp. With those last words said, I was wheeled out of the room and down to the bright white halls. Heading towards one of the operating rooms, Dr. Stormy and Dr. Saito both kept up a steady stream of conversation with their respective teams, going over what they'll be doing next and what to do if something goes wrong. Not long after I'd left my friends, I was pushed into the operating room and every pony started to get scrubbed up and ready for the first stage of my, uh, let's just call it an event, because that's what it's turning out to be. Regular surgeries take maybe two or four hours, depending upon what it is. This is an entire day plus. Yeah, fucking event. Dr. Stormy came over, her face covered with a medical mask. She moved closer, saying, Time for you to go to sleep, Shadow. When you wake up, hopefully you'll be your old self. Or better, if I can help it. And don't freak out if I did something cool and you're not comfortable with it right away. Like having your new leg turn into a blaster. That would be cool. She paused for a second, then said, Relax. I'm only kidding. 
If I could do that kind of stuff, you'd get more than just a blaster leg. Dr. Saito put a needle into the IV going to my remaining foreleg, and as soon as I felt it enter my blood, I felt my eyes start to droop and the room slowly going black. Dr. Stormy's horn started to glow as she readied her knockout spell. Right before I lost consciousness, I felt something deep inside my mind open up, followed by a tug as another consciousness connected to mine. I'm not sure how, but I knew somewhere deep inside that this was due to the last spell Mom used before she died. It was the tether connecting my life to Aquila. The world went black. Aquila. I felt the strange connection for only a second, like a quick jab to the back of my mind. Before I could figure out what it was, the feeling went away. I cursed that and kept working my way towards my new destination. Over the past two days, I've been traveling towards New Pegasus. With one thought on my mind, I have a debt to collect from that traitorous at-hat Thunder Lane. The fool thinks he can try and kill my old vessel and break our deal, and there'd be no consequences? What a fool. Though I guess he's always been one. A pony who wants more and more power, but lacks the brain and sack to take it. My whole plan backfired on me, which just pisses me off more. All I wanted to do was get Shadow out of my way once and for all. Thanks to fucking Grimoire, though. That didn't happen. At least she died when she used that spell to bind me to her stupid brat's life. I'll take any win I can. Anyways, I'll deal with my plans for the future and deal with that moron later. I just made it to freedom. I was on my way towards the strip when a stab of pain ran up my chest, followed by my foreleg. I gasped and almost screamed into the morning air, but managed to hold it back. The pain took a good few minutes to pass but in that time I knew something was happening to Shadow. Probably getting her damn leg fixed, or her heart, both. Oh well, I don't care. The spell placed on us only works to kill me if I have something to do with her death. Yeah, I caused the leg injury, but the scarring of her lungs and heart was all because of Orticalis. If she died that way, then all the better. It wouldn't harm me in any way apart from a little pain that I can ignore after a fashion. I shook off the after-feeling of whatever was being done to Shadow, and continued towards the Strip. I wish I still had the passport to get into the place, but since I no longer had Shadow's body, I didn't have her shit like the last time I was here. So, I will just have to get in the magical way. As soon as I saw the gates protected by robots, I activated the sea of power within myself and teleported. In a flash, I was past the gate and a block or so past the Lucky Horseshoe. No pony seemed to notice me flashing into existence, so I kept on walking. I made my way to the ramshackle building where that weird Pegasus Kitter's Fly lived and worked. I went up to the door and tried to go inside, but the door was locked. Fucking lazy ass Pegasus! I said, then kicked on the door. No one answered. Growling in anger, I used my magic to blast open the door. I went flying across the empty room. I walked in and looked around. The Pegasus wasn't anywhere to be seen. Damn. I guess he went back to work up in Stratus. I all the crap I heard that was going on around here. Oh well. I knew how to work the terminal and communication stuff anyway. I was here for a short time when I was in Kroll of Shadow's body. I watched Kidders fly into the codes and everything else, so I knew what to do. With a few keystrokes on the Pegasus terminal, which he left unlocked like an idiot. I connected to the Enclave's secret broadcast channel. One meant for only the highest positions. On the far wall, a screen came to life as a darkened room filled the screen. A ghoul pegasus, mostly hidden in shadow, sitting against a high-backed chair. More like a throne. I would never call it that. The damn pegasus already had an ego to put shadows to shame. As soon as the screen came to life, Thunder Lane said in a rough, scratchy voice, Who the hell is this, and how did you get access to the terminal in New Pegasus? Rolling my eyes, I walked closer to the screen. Who do you think it is, you jerkified moron? 
He leaned forward a little. His eyes, the only part of his face I could see, their black and gold shimmering from whatever little light was in the room he was in. Ah, could that really be you again, Aquila? I thought the courier was able to push you back into your prison. Was the information I got wrong? No, it wasn't. And don't act like you didn't contact her yourself a few days ago. Remember, I can see everything she does, even when I'm weak and trapped deep inside of her mind. I know that you told her and the threat you made towards me. I've come here to get answers. We had a deal, and if you plan on backing out of that deal, I will make my way up there and gut you. I said, trying and failing to keep the anger out of my voice. He chuckled to himself. Ah, yes. There's the friendly little threats I was waiting for. I figured she was able to lock you up for good this time. I can't be held responsible for holding a deal with a creature that has no body of her own and can be locked away when I need her help. Well, that won't be a problem anymore. This body is my own. I'm no longer trapped within that worthless brat's head anymore. I said, smiling inside as that fact rolled over me. No longer would have to worry about Shadow finding a way to push me back into my prison, or having to listen to her complain about her life or her friends. I was my own being now, and it's time to start putting my own plans into action. But first, I need the help of the betrayer. He took a moment to finally respond. Maybe he was shocked at the news, or maybe the old pony was just sleeping. Hard to tell with ghouls. Finally, he asked, How'd you manage something like that? You look a lot like Shadow, only you're white and not black. Taller, too, I think. That's hard for my old eyes to tell. I tricked Grimm into getting the Ministry to make me a synth body. They used Shadow's DNA to make it match my own genetic code. I said, Interesting. I had no idea the Ministry was able to make clones. He said, It's not a clone. Well, not in the general sense. More like a highly realistic android made for something I don't fully understand. But this body is indistinguishable from a real pony. That's why it's a perfect fit for me. Now, can we back to the matter at Hoof? We had a deal, and I expect you to live up to it, Thunder Lane. I said. Or have you forgotten the promise that I made you 200 years ago? That got his attention. No, I haven't forgotten the deal we made back then. Or the one we made recently. So I guess we're still working together then. It's probably a good thing anyway. <coughs> My master did say that we needed a creature of light to free him. So, if you live up to your end, then I'll live up to mine. I wanted to roll my eyes. As if I'd live up to my end of the bargain. I know who this master is and how much power I have. I know that would happen if me, if that monster ever got free. Thunderlane didn't need to know my true plans. He was just a tool. One that I was going to use until he was nothing more than broken and worthless than he's already is. So I just smiled, making sure to word what I said just right. One problem with being a creature of light magic as I am, I can't tell a full lie. I can bend the truth, though, and that's close enough for me. I promise that I'll do everything in my power to help you. Good. So, what was it you needed from me again? Also, your last bit of intel didn't pan out well, so I'll need you to give me something else about falling shadows, he said. I'll need you to get your forces to secure the Crystal Empire. Make sure the place can't be invaded, because Shadow will go there at some point. She knows where Manette's forgotten library is, I said. <laughs> I know where it is, too. Though I can't get in, she made sure of that. Only Night Stalker's family or Manette's can enter, he said. I know. You just need to keep Shadow from getting in there, at least until I can make it there. With this body, I should be able to get in and put a stop to whatever Night Stalker did to the tower. As for the information I gave you about Nightshade... What do you mean it didn't pan out? I asked. 
My grandchildren have him in custody now, and still this so-called stranger has been spotted near New Pegasus a few times now. I don't know what made you think it was him, but it's not. Even worse, we can't seem to find the sneaky Pegasus, he said. Damn, I said, thinking hard. It had to be a pony that Nightshade was working with. I'll look into it. Give me a few days, but in the meantime, I do have some other information that should make you feel a little better. He leaned forward again, but his face still stayed hidden as he said, Oh, really? Do tell. I smiled. Grimoire spell is dead. And just to make it even better, I have the location of the ministry for you as well. Send your pegasi to Lost Solicorn and look near the university. Sooner or later, you'll find Shadow and her friends. Also, just to top off the interesting news, you remember that unicorn, Dr. Stormy? The one that you thought died in the Mill City Tower incident? Yes. What about her? It was a big loss for our science program, especially right before we lost the recruiters in Stable 97, he said. She's alive. The mayor who died in that tower was a synth. Stormy has been working with the Ministry for 12 years, I said with a big smile. I had a feeling that mare was trouble, but we can deal with her once we figure out a way to get into La Solicorn. That can wait till later. Do you have anything else for me, Aquila? He asked. My grin just got bigger as I thought about another way to kick Shadow while he's down. Actually, you really should keep an eye on a mare named Stratus, uh, in Stratus, named Fairy Glitter. I awoke with a startle, as the feeling of seeing through Aquila's eyes hit me all at once. I have no idea what happened. Was it a dream? Or is there more to our link than Mom's spell? Either way, I'll have to do something about it as soon as I can. Then the thoughts of Aquila and her screams filled my mind as a deep, aching pain went through me all at once. I groaned and brought my forelegs up to my face slowly, then froze. My eyes snapped open as I looked at my fully functional left foreleg. If I hadn't known I'd lost it a couple days ago, I wouldn't have believed it was missing. I moved the leg back and forth, and to my amazement it followed everything I told it to do. I reached my left foreleg out and touched the appendage, and it felt like any other ponies should feel. I then looked down at my chest, expecting to see scars or something from the heart surgery, but there was nothing. Even the old scar from when I'd stabbed myself with the, when the griffins attacked was gone. I looked over my shoulder, which had been damaged numerous times in the past. The scar from the blood wing was still there, just fainter than before, and the scars from the bullet wounds too. I reached up and felt where my missing ear was, and there it was again. Damn, the Ministry sure knows how to fix up a pony. Then I noticed that I wasn't choking on plastic that tasted like hospital. I can breathe! I know, isn't it amazing? Stormy said from the door, making me jump. I looked at her for a moment, and said, Yeah, it's amazing. I would have never guessed I was injured before. She shrugged. It's my best work, that's for sure. Even the director's implants aren't as sophisticated as yours. Don't tell her, though. She'll get jealous and nag me to make her stuff better. It'll get in the way of my research. Plus, I'm a little lazy, so meh. I looked at my foreleg again. So I've got a robot arm, heart, legs, and ear now? She rolled her eyes. Yes and no. I could go into the vastly complicated mechanics and details about what it takes to make your new organs and limbs and so on, but... It would all surely bore you, but it's simply everything we had to fix or replace on you is pony made. It's not cloning like I've said before when we made Aquila's body. For example, your foreleg is going to be stronger than when you were born with. Same goes for the bones in that limb. It'll be harder for you to take damage in those areas. Same goes for your new hearts and lungs. As for right now, you've got a stronger heart and lungs than what you were born with. It's amazing that you were able to come up with this kind of thing. 
I thought you all made sense just so you could take over the wasteland or something like that. I said. No. Well, I don't. Same for White Oak. The Ministry before White Oak took over, did have plans to take over parts of the wasteland using synths, where the designs were rudimentary and plainly just a bunch of crap. Plus, some unfrozen guy was giving him crap about kidnapping his son and blah, blah, blah. Boring stuff, Stormy said as she came to sit next to my bed. When I was taken on to work here many, many years ago, the director wanted to have the synth program expanded, but not in the way the original board wanted. We do replace ponies in key areas of the wasteland, but only to help stabilize an area, not to take it over. Did you take this job and run away from the Enclave because you wanted to make something better than the Devil's Children program? I asked. At the mention of the program that Stardust was part of, her ears fell and she looked away. After a moment, she said, the Devil Children program was my idea, that's true. But what became wasn't what I wanted it to be. By the time the children were taken and being raised, I didn't have much control in it anymore. It wasn't until three years ago that I was offered a chance to come back into the fold of that program, mostly because they were getting close to finishing Phase 1. But that time, I was already going between Nimbus and here quite a bit. So you made a synth? I asked. She nodded. I did, mostly so I could move into the Ministry full-time, but kept spying on the Enclave for the Director. I also used to have it as ways to keep an eye on the program so I could shut it down if I needed to. I also had to make sure that my synth was believable as a heartless bitch. As I'm sure you saw when you met her and <clears throat> destroyed her? Yeah, sorry about that, I said sheepishly. She chuckled a little. It's okay. Honestly, I'm not surprised you did. Like I said, she was cold and heartless. Close to my own personality at times, but not the real me. Still, if he makes it feel any better, I was the one who made sure that Stardust got out. Wait, I thought Doorstop was the one who got him out. I asked. She laughed again. Yes, it was. But... He helped them escape because he got some intel that Phase 1 was about to go into Phase 2. He got that information from his sister, Fairy Glitter. Fairy Glitter gets her information from informants, and who do you think one of her informants is? Wait, you? I asked. Yes, me. I've hated the Enclave for a long time. I met Fairy Glitter a long time ago when I was dating her husband's sister. She stopped looking away as she was deep in thought. Then said, can't remember her name, I wouldn't call it dating, more like we'd meet up, drink, sex, drink some more, and so on. I couldn't help but laugh, and that escaped, followed by a groan of pain. Do you even remember the mares you dated? I saw Mom's memory orbs, it's like you forget them all, even when they're laying in your lap. She rolled her eyes. You saw the baby shower, M Murray, huh? Still, no, I don't have a good memory when it comes to the mares I don't really care about. She blushed a little and looked away. Grim was the only mare I ever really wanted. I knew I couldn't have her, and that's okay. But still, you can't help who you love and all that noise. You should know that as well. I mean, you're with a griffin. Well, a mare that used to be a griffin? Pretty interesting, if you ask me, by the way. I'm sure the sex life changed dramatically when that mess happened. She's still a griffin. She's just hiding under the skies of a cute mare. I said, trying not to laugh again. I was still amazed how much I really enjoyed the company of Dr. Stormy. Well, let's not forget all the bad stuff now. I came in here to see how your new body parts are working and then to get you to therapy. She said with a smile. Think you can tell me when this pain will go away? I asked. Should only be a few hours, maybe a day. Your body's just getting used to the new mechanics that'll put in. The therapy we'll be doing will mostly help you get used to the new limb, she replied. She moved to get up, but I reached a hoof out to stop her. Not yet. First, I need you to tell you something that I saw while I was under. You said something about fairy glitter. 
I think she's in danger. Aquila is working with a pony who should have died a long time ago. Her eyes went wide. She asked, What do you mean? Before I could tell her about the dream or vision I had, the door to my room opened and in walked a sin. The new Raph, decked out in his power armor, a huge rifle strapped to his back, a blue visor on his helmet, a blonde mane flowing behind him, and a gray coat just visible in small areas. If I had my weapons on me right now, I'd blow him away before he could do anything to me. Sadly, I couldn't. I was trapped with only Stormy in the room with me as a killer stood in the doorway. Raph, what are you doing back here? You were told to stay with the Sins, Stormy said, making me look at her in the shock. R what, wait a second, he works for you? I asked. Before I could get an answer, the new Raph walked up into the room and reached down to remove his helmet. For the first time, I got a good look at his true face. He had tears in his yellow eyes as he said, Is it true, Stormy? Did Grim die? Please tell me it's not true, Doc. Please! My eyes were glued on his face. So much that what he said, but as my eyes fell on the face of a pony who I knew was dead. The stallion I saw die a gruesome death in Stardust's memories. In a shaky voice, I said, Hailstorm? Footnote. Level up. New perk added. Six million bit filly. Seems you've taken quite a beating. However, it's great to have friends in low places. Due to your affiliation with the Ministry, you've been fitted with artificial body parts that will make you tougher, stronger, and possibly even cooler. On your artificial points, parts only, you have an extra 30% damage resistance to the exterior leg and ear from physical attacks, while the heart and lungs have an extra 50% damage resistance from chemical attacks. Although it did cost a fortune. 